Why? Because it's a great spot to watch fights. Oh, it's from Company Man. Well, he usually looks like the looks at the financials of things, not so much like the actual like uh, quality of the stuff itself. At least in my experience with watching his content, I do like his channel though. Okay, I'll, I'll see. But I imagine it's going to be a financial analysis of it. Exhibit some fiends. Waffle House is a chain of restaurants unlike any other. They become almost like a cultural icon in the South. When we look at the mm -hmm. map of their locations, it's clear that anyone living in the Southeast likely knows all about this place. Georgia specifically, the state right. in which they started, contains around 400 of their almost 2,000 locations. Whoa! So as you work your way farther from the Southeast, your likelihood of knowing about them becomes lower and lower, which is a shame because oh, these are some wow. pretty tasty waffles, and millions of people in those areas of the country you don't have, to lie have to no practical man. way of getting them. It truly is a southern thing. I would argue one of the most successful. They've been standing. estimated to have over a billion dollars in sales each year, which would qualify them to be one of the biggest chains in the country. Unfortunately, nah. their financial information has been famously secretive, but in 2005, they did claim to use 2% of all eggs produced in the United States. So for today, I'm excited to talk about Waffle House, taking a look back at their history while identifying what I believe to be some of the biggest reasons behind their growth and success. Starting at the very beginning with the two founders named Joe Rogers Sr. and Tom Forkner, who turned out to be Tom. such a perfect pair to start their own restaurant. Joe Rogers served in the army as a pilot during World War II. When he returned home, he had two children to support, so he passed on utilizing the GI Bill to go to college and instead found a job as a short order cook. It wasn't long before he worked his way up to a regional manager position for a chain of diners called Toddle House that no longer exists. He was always interested in obtaining some equity in that restaurant so he would be the partial owner. Well, in Smart. 1955, that was looking unlikely, so he set out to start his own restaurant. Tom Forkner enters the story because he was a real estate agent who happened to be a friend of Rogers because he had actually sold him a house a few years earlier. So the two of them got together to open the first ever Waffle House in a suburb. I wonder why Georgia. waffles in I particular. It was a great pair because Forkner had the real estate and financial background while Rogers knew how to manage a restaurant. They shared a similar vision for it that obviously proved chief. to be successful for almost 70 years now. My next reason behind Hope that success fun. is the simplicity, because you would have a hard time finding many businesses that have changed so packs. little since 1955. Just look at that name, Waffle House. <laughs> How could it possibly be any more straightforward? In the beginning, they True. wanted to emphasize waffles on their menu because that was their highest margin item. That's where they would make most of their money. By the way, there were only 16 items on that original menu, and all things considered, it has not changed all that much since. It is it's so just a pretty again the food at waffle house is secondary to why you go the reason you go is to watch fights and i imagine as company man continues we'll learn more about tom i think tom would be the mastermind like hmm, this seems like a good location to incite some violence so i you know i feel like that's coming in the story soon like the food's okay the food's never like terrible but it's really not why you go to waffle house it's just not if you're looking for food, like, because you're hungry, you're going anywhere besides Waffle House. You'll go to a different diner. You'll go anywhere that isn't Waffle House. Waffle House is like that last resort restaurant, or you're there for the spectacle. Basic and straightforward, especially when you compare it to some of their main competitors, like IHOP. I'm just saying, you are not going to find flavored syrups or anything resembling the Rudy Tooty fresh and fruity over at Waffle House. But yep. another motive for emphasizing nope, the you're right. was to try and make them stand out from competing drive through and carry out places. Here, that's pushing me into the next reason behind their success, which is strategic placement. In the 1950s, car is the was really becoming a uh, thing. It's AKA, like was syllabi and tier one butter. Roads were being built everywhere and there was a bunch of fast food restaurants trying to take advantage of it by establishing drive throughs and carry out services. Waffle House was trying to take advantage of it in a bit of a different way. They were building their new restaurants alongside those interstates but they felt that they could stand out from the others by being one of the few where you have to sit down and eat inside. Since waffles are food, uh, being food, less convenient. And eat them inside. <laughs> I love that. All of our all of our competitors are offering drive through which is very convenient for customers. At Waffle House, why not make it a little less convenient? <laughs> like, that is the most Waffle House shit ever.
We won't offer drive through Instead, you will have to come inside. So we should stand out. Side. They're a little fragile. To then you're right. It did work they somehow. That having the word in their name would help convey how they were different. And yet another aspect of that would be their yellow theme. If you go to a Waffle House, be prepared to see so much yellow. It's on the signs, on the building, oftentimes throughout the inside of the restaurant. It gives them a recognizable theme, but it's also effective in capturing everyone's attention. Truly, what is more eye-catching than the color yellow? You're driving down. The Anything line, else? It's a bad color. <laughs> like it sucks. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> I feel, it feels that so old. a little self-explanatory. So another reason behind their success would be the fact that they are always open. I'm talking about all yeah. day, every day, including holidays, and it has been that way since the very beginning. We have to remember that back in 1955, it was almost unheard of to stay open for 24 hours. In fact, there was only one other restaurant McDonald's. in all of Atlanta that did the same thing. So even though there may have been fewer potential customers at night, they were attracting a much higher percentage of them. According to co-founder, Joe Rogers, the night business determines whether we have sales enough to be profitable. He claims that one of the reasons the Waffle House concept works so effectively in the South is because the warmer weather helps keep everyone more active at night, as opposed to the North where everything just kind of shuts down. Here, they are That's not so a bad point, I suppose. Closing, that even their executives are expected to work during the holidays. So I would say that being a reliable presence at late night travelers and whoever But it's not really the hours, weather, it's more just like how open, no much what, alcohol they've had. Attracted plenty of business over the years. My next reason behind their success would be the fact that they have managed to remain under tight family control. For the most part, Waffle House has been privately owned and operated by the same families. In 1973, Joe Rogers Jr. took control of things as the company's president and held that position for the next 40 years and even still remains chairman of the board. Even the two founders have remained with the company in different ways, I believe, until their deaths when they were 97 and 98 years old. Wow. Oddly enough, Rogers died in March of 2017 and Forkner died in April of 2017. And you might be thinking that it's really difficult for a company to remain private but still expand in the way that they have. You know, at some point you would expect them to raise money through a public stock offering or by taking out loans, but Waffle House has impressively been able to avoid all of that. The main way they've grown is my next reason on the list franchising it is a yeah that that is true that they have, really started yeah, becoming popular very around 1960s franchise. so that year when they had only four locations all around the atlanta area they saw the trend of what was happening around them and opened their first franchise whoa 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 that whoa, right whoa. t-bone steak for a dollar 35 at waffle house no wonder they popped off so hard in the beginning what a deal that's a bargain Oh, they don't have that anymore. The only beef you get at Waffle House is with a fist. But that is a great start, though. So it seems like they emphasized waffles back... Or they emphasized waffles at the start, but still had, like, a, a premium selection there is where things started picking up steam opening more than 20 new restaurants throughout the 1960s and that just kept accelerating as time continued from what i can tell they have been really selective when choosing the franchisees who would operate them not even leaving it open to the public so that has helped them maintain their standards and keep everything consistent between different locations all right here's a couple of quicker ones how about their quality i think most would no. agree that the quality of food that you get at waffle nope. house is pretty decent considering the price <laughs> they no way, <laughs> just straight fucking no. It is okay. It is okay food. It's never bad. It's never good. It is okay. It, Meadow said it best. The reason you go to Waffle House is the same reason you go to a medieval times restaurant. You're there for the, you're there for the, the show, the fights. The price is cheap, which is nice. And the food is okay for the price, yes. But there's still better options for the same price. Again, if it's if you really want food... For a cheap price, there are better options. Thanks to Prime Chimera. That's what he said, though. He said it's good. Good is not a word I would use. He said it's pretty good. I throw the good word out the window when talking about Waffle House. I say it's okay. 
No, he said good. Didn't he say good? Tend to stick to pretty decent considering oh, he said the decent. Price. They tend to stick to the more popular You're right. name brands. I lashed out thinking he said pretty good. Because it's more familiar to people and they believe it's worth the extra cost to bring that quality up a little bit. Their original slogan was good food fast, showing that quality has been a long time concern, but also their speed. They are known for their fast service. Let me know if you've ever ordered anything at Waffle House and just been shocked at how fast it was ready. Being fast was so fast. important I agree. to them that up until 2006, they wouldn't accept credit or debit cards from their customers because it felt it would slow things down. Not surprisingly, that became an issue because you needed to have cash to eat there, which by that time wasn't as common as it once was. They even tried installing ATM machines in some of the restaurants so people could access their cash, but it ultimately just made more sense to take a little bit more time with their transactions. Okay, back to the list. My tenth and final reason behind the success of Waffle House has to do with the environment that they create. Their there are so many functions. Yeah. Ultimately, the main goal is to create the sense of friendliness and southern hospitality. This blue collar atmosphere that promotes conversation that just makes everyone uh, feel welcome. Is what what waffle houses have you visited? Bro, that shit is a bloodbath. Every waffle house is a ticking time bomb just ready to go off. The atmosphere I I do agree with the point. The environment is one of the main reasons it's so successful. But for the exact opposite reason, because of how hostile it is, that shit goes so wacko mode so quick. Friendliness is not a applicable to a Waffle House. That's where friendliness goes to die. But I agree. The environment is one of the main contributing factors for why it's successful. Just not for friendliness. Thanks for some DK and the Prime Broccoli. Yeah, maybe we'll do what, uh, what Eddie Burback did. What Eddie and Ted did, we'll just do like a nationwide tour of every Waffle House. <laughs> just go up the entire East Coast hitting every fucking Waffle House. Instead of doing the Rainforest Cafe. I don't know if we'd survive. I actually don't. I, I don't think we'd make it out of that adventure alive. Two thousand restaurants. Two thousand restaurants. That's right. Just pick one in each state. No, that's not a good sample size. You gotta be thorough. Just imagine that video title. I went to every Waffle House in America. It almost sounds like an I impossible. Because there's so many. There's so, so many. There's like at least two Waffle Houses within any given 10 mile radius. Probably less than that. Probably like six. Do five in each state. You guys aren't understanding. The content is I went to every Waffle House in America. Not I went to five Waffle Houses in each state in America. That doesn't work. Thanks to Reese Wes. I fought at every... <laughs> I fought at every Waffle House in America goes even harder. Yeah, I could, br I could bring the violence with me. Like, if there's not a fight there, I'll make one. That's a yeah, That title goes even harder. Thanks to the Prime Uncle. Joe Rogers Sr. liked to say, we aren't in the food business, we are in the people business. God damn right. Said, Our in the job is beating to make people, people up business. Because they ate with us. I've kind of already mentioned some of the ways they do that in my previous reasons, but I want to mention a few more here, like the layout. You can usually tell that you're in a Waffle House. I get my ass beat at every Waffle House in America. It makes it easy to talk to everybody, and you can see the grill and everything else that's going on back there. It tries to be more like one big communal setting, rather than being sectioned off like you might 
currency for most of their competitors. Another aspect of the environment that I want to mention is the Prime Comet. Jukebox. I don't know of any other restaurant chain where you could still expect to find a jukebox. In the 1980s, they even established a record label that produces songs what? to be played in those jukeboxes. The songs are mostly food or restaurant themed. I've actually listened to quite a few of them at this point, and my review is that they're mostly pretty lame, but somehow in a catchy, what entertaining the fuck? Way. I had no idea. I don't know. But doing all these things that is super cool. Such a friendly environment has helped produce some loyal customers that tell other people about Waffle House. Word of mouth advertising has been effective and helped them avoid paying traditional advertising. The final thing I feel I should mention about the environment of Waffle House is that it may not have been friendly in everyone's experience. And what yeah. I'm referring to here is a long line of lawsuits and accusations involving racism. Just a oh, few what? notable examples would be in 1984, a oh, white female alleged she was not even what I was talking House about for marrying a black man. In 2002, an interracial couple filed a lawsuit claiming that the staff refused to serve them. In 2005, a black family claimed that a Waffle House waitress told them that they didn't serve black people. In 2014, Holy shit. they were sued by a former black employee who didn't feel he was being treated equally while working there. Again, these are just a few examples. There are so many more accusations along the same lines. The stance of Waffle House has pretty much been to deny all of it. Joe Rogers Sr. has even given examples of how they were helping the civil rights movement back in the 50s and 60s. It's a complicated issue with opposing sides, so I encourage you to look further into it so you can form your own opinions. For now, I just want to mention that sorry, I had no has idea. maintained a certain level of success despite this negative reputation. Let me know in the comments, have you ever been to Waffle House? Given their geographic reach, I would imagine that maybe half of the viewers have been there. And if you have been there... I will say that this is a little surprising. I thought Waffle, Waffle House was nationwide. I thought like everywhere had a ton of Waffle Houses. I didn't realize it was just kind of like the South. That is a little surprising to me. Yeah, California doesn't have fucking any. That blows my mind. Have you not known that? Because I, I, keep in mind, I don't go out here. Like the furthest out here I've gone is Texas. I stay over here. So I always see Waffle Houses, so I just assumed it was a nationwide chain. And I guess they're trying, like, they're kind of, you know, they're pushing the issue a bit, they're, they're broaching the territory. People just fight in the streets here, we don't need a Waffle House to do it. That seems so uncivilized, like, fighting in the streets, why not just take it to a Waffle House? I don't know, you guys need to have a couple. At least one or two, like a central Waffle House throwdown. Why is there 400 Waffle Houses in Georgia? That's where they started. That's what company, company Man was just saying. They started in Georgia, so they really loaded that shit up with Waffle Houses. We fight in Jackbox. Uh, is that right? Never seen a Waffle House in person? Yeah, I guess if you're out here, you've probably never seen one. In here, though, I'd be shocked if you've never seen any. They're everywhere. You might not have recognized them because some Waffle Houses look like something out of Fallout. Like, they're all dilapidated, decrepit, falling apart and shit. So there's a chance that you've seen it, you just didn't know it was a restaurant. You probably just thought it was, like, some kind of destroyed, condemned building. have been there and if you have been there what do you think of it are my reasons behind their success accurate or do you have something to add or subtract from it and how do they compare to their main competitors like ihop or denny's and any other thoughts you have about the famous waffle house leave them in the comments uh, i love I'd waffle like to hear house what you lore have to say waffle house Thank lore is so crazy i've been on such a waffle house bender man ever since learning about the the index it's so fascinating. So they have their own record label for Waffle House exclusive music. I'm about to drop my next mixtape just for Waffle House locations. You can only catch it at your local Waffle House.
They have a music video called Waffle House Southern Classic Cookin'. Is it Prime IOU? I- and maybe Tori. Thanks to the Bitskin way. Waffle House Southern Classic Cookin'. Oh, they have their own YouTube channel. Here you go. Thank you. This looks really good. Now all we need is some music, right? Better turn on the Waffle House jukebox. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, it's about to pop off. This is such a lazy ZZ Top parody. You can do better, Waffle House. I expected more. I didn't hear any dubstep or anything. You have to be more modern than this. When did this come out? 12 years ago? That's the height of dubstep. And you're doing ZZ Top sharp dressed man parodies? <sighs> Unlucky. It's the South. That's no excuse. Hopefully that won't happen, Tori. They're going for the grandpa crowd? Maybe. I wonder what the... So it's been a while since last time I went to Waffle House. Last time I went, it was mainly drunk people. But I also think that's like just the area I was in because it was near a university. I really feel like the average clientele for Waffle House is usually on the younger side. I feel like. Is it tier one? Nile? No shot? You don't think so? Maybe it really does just depend on the time. I don't know if I've ever been to a Waffle House during the day. Maybe that's when the old people come out. Never seen young people at a Waffle House. Yeah, like I said, it could just be where I was the last time I went. But usually going to a Waffle House is a late night decision. Like a very late night decision. I've worked in Waffle House. I've worked for Waffle House in Georgia for five years. It could blow your mind on the cringe cult lore. <laughs> what is that? What do you mean the cult lore? Is there like a Waffle House cult? I feel like the the requirement to be an employee is pretty lax. Like they just they teach you how to use everything, and then wish you good luck for when the fights break out. You see that Mr. Beast turned down a billion dollar offer for his channel. Where'd you see that? What? Oh, here. You're right. Mr. Beast reveals why he turned down a billion dollar offer for his YouTube channel. Is that real? Like, would someone actually offer that? Because you don't get anything out of his channel once Mr. Beast isn't there. 
The second you buy that channel for a billion dollars, you're left with nothing. If I was Mr. Beast, I would have accepted that just as the joke. Because now that guy is literally left with 110 million subscribers that will immediately not look at the channel again. Oh, it was a cha it was the channel and his companies. That's different. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't actually, like, read through it very much. It's just focusing, this article is just focusing on his channel. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Worth so much more. Oh, it is. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was just his channel. If it was just his channel... He could have absolutely taken that deal, just made another one, and then do the same thing and still get 100 million subscribers. And they're left with a channel that they can't even use anymore. But yeah, if it's the channel and companies, no, that's a bad deal. Legitimately, it's worth more than a billion dollars. No chance? No, man. I think you're really undervaluing the reach of Mr. Beast and his companies and everything that he's got his hand in. It's it's out. It, it is. It, it would blow your fucking mind. Thanks for resub, Corey. Thanks for tier one, Hogan. And there's the prime squid. You need to see the trailer for the death.